Hey everybody! So what I thought I'd do is put a few simple things together of things that we've been doing before to make what is basically an awesome machine. These things, these are the simplest gear you can get. They're spur gears and they're super easy to make in Tinkercad, so let's make a few of those. Okay, so people have called me obsessive about Tinkercad, and I suppose I am, because, you know, it's super easy to use, you get the results you want, you can do a wild number of things, and you can share it easily. Who wouldn't want to obsess? When you export something from this as well, you get the option to export, export it into Autodesk uh, Fusion 360. So you can make that graduation to the man's CAD program if you want to. But I like the kiddie room, it works for me. Anyway, I never do anything on this without placing the ruler, and that's exactly what I'm doing right there. I've placed a ruler. And that's because it allows me to measure everything. Now when we're looking for something like this, just click on there and type in gear. And if we enter search for gear, then that blue one right there is a metric gear. We can drag that down and put it onto the workspace and we can see it's automatically got sizes. You'll change that to 10 because a centimeter is what I actually want. And we have ourselves a gear. Now if you go over here where we can see the blue color in the module, the module is to do with the tooth size. When it's me, I usually change that module to two and it'll change that gear to a nice chunky gear. There you go, nice and chunky, and I like that with plastic because it takes a while to wear it out. Now we've got a number of teeth here and it's set at 18, let's change that to 20. There we go, and we've got our spur gear. Now we want to put this in a gear chain, we might want to duplicate that. And you can do that with this button here, duplicate and repeat or control D. Click that, there is a duplication now and we can move it across. Because this is highlighted, we're working with this one. If you go over to number of teeth and change that number of teeth to 40, we've created spur gears with a two to one ratio. Because there's 20 teeth there, 40 teeth there, so it's two to one. If we put those in a chain like that, everything would be hunky-dory super burlesque, but we want to make a gear chain, so a gear train, sorry. So here, remember this is 10 and this is 10. If you click on there, that's the distance from the base plate. So change that to 10 and it will float above it. Now we can actually link those two by centering at that button there, a line left it says. If you click on that, go down to the one you want to center to and click on it, you'll see that the centering marks are here and here, which centers the gear one above the other. So now we can print a load of those and swap them over with each other and we can make a gear train really, really easily. The only thing we really need to do is to drill a hole. So if we get rid of that, pick the hole, drag it across, make the sides nice and smooth. We've got 20, which is the same size as that. I like to do it just a little bit bigger. So 22 and we're gonna do an eight millimeter hole, eight, eight, and then we can highlight all of this and align again. Click on our align marks and it aligns it. Now we can merge them. And there's the merge button there, group or control G, merge them. And there we go. Print a load of those, gear train, no worries at all. Hit that color, you change the color there. Let's make it a pretty cream, there we go. <laughs> Piece of cake. Now to get that out, what we do is here on the export, download and 3D print, export. There you go, there's your Fusion 360 option. Choose STL and it will export an STL fi file for you, ready to go into your Cura. Of course, that's just the gears by themselves. We need to put them in a machine. And I put this together in Tinkercad and I've chopped out some pretty bits to make it look cuter. And because I want to do a high gear generator using a serpentine coil, I'm gonna do that on the daisy, which is that sort of pretty daisy-like pattern. We're gonna stick a serpentine coil on that. When we've done that, of course, what we get is a collection of plastic parts. And you'll notice I've printed two of these, one of these, and it has little indentations in the back and I've stuck magnets in there. These are uh, one centimeter by two millimeters N35s going north, south, north, south, north, south. Because that sticks on there so that we can spin it and get our generation. Now to make the daisy coil, ah, you might notice that there's this. This is a former. Sorry, <laughs> you wind your wire around there. And we got gaps, we can tie the wire, pull it off, stick it onto the daisy and put it together as a coil. And when we do that, 
that's what we get. So that's ready to go as a generator. Now to make it, we put the first one on there, which is engages there. Then this one goes on there, engaging in the small. So we're going small, large, small, large, small, large. And this final one goes on there like that. And that's our ridiculous gear train. So when we give that a little spin, this will spin very, very quickly. Can't do that at the moment until I put this other frame on. But I've also got this handle there that I did that goes on the little cross section to help us turn it. Now I appreciate there are things I've skipped over, I didn't go much into the serpentine call for instance, but then I've done a lot of videos on that, like video 1929, video 1859 and video 1800 to mention a few, where we go into in-depth details. But this is 0.2mm wire and there's 50 turns on each coil, which is piddling actually, but that's what it is. We're relying on this gear train. This is a huge step up gear uh, train that we're relying on to get some speed out of the magnets because we're looking at BLV sine theta and we're looking at how to go around making these simple spur gear, spur gear, gear trains to actually do something. So when I turn this handle, we'll get some mighty speed out of that and we'll get some pretty impressive generation out of it, despite the fact that it's a tiny amount of copper and a not particularly strong magnetic field. Anyway, let's give it a spin up and see what happens. I thought that was particularly cool. It was a bit tough, but then it's a bit rough and ready and it's all about gears. What I might do if I were to revisit this is make that handle longer because it was a little tough to turn the handle. Maybe make this base a bit wider so that we could sit the base on something and get hand clearance room. And what I probably would do was stick a lot of bearings in it because it was all a bit stiff. So I was fighting against it a little bit. Despite all of that, we got a pretty good result out of something like that. And that would be adaptable quite easily into something like, I don't know, a handheld torch maybe, a wind-up radio, that sort of thing. But a load of things that a little generator like that can do because it has a surprising amount of voltage courtesy of the speed of the gears. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.